One simple way to regularize a neural network is by using dropout. The method is simple, stochastically apply a binary mask over each neuron to zero out their output. This helps prevent overfitting. Visually, across a few iterations, your algorithm looks like this. Starting from the base network with a given probability per layer of dropping out, apply a binary mask on the output of each neuron. For instance, in the first mini batch, the output of the neurons in red is multiplied by zero, while the neurons in white are multiplied by one. The second mini batch, a new binary mask is constructed and applied to the network. This continues for as long as the network is training, up to the last mini batch. Now, during the testing phase, it's as if we are averaging the output of all the permutations of networks together, with the added twist that all the network trains share the same weights. This is in a nutshell what bagging is, an ensemble method to increase accuracy on a task by using the output of multiple trained models. Bagging methods works best when the different networks are not too close in similarity, meaning for dropout to be theoretically optimal, big updates should be made through each iteration. Yet stochastic gradient descent works best when it's one model that is updated steadily over a smaller step. This is where the author came out with the MaxOut network, a network containing activation units that are optimized to be used with dropout but trained with stochastic gradient descent. In today's video, we'll explore this network architecture taken from this paper and how the idea from the MaxOut unit is used nowadays. All links are in the description. At a high level overview, a MaxOut network could look something like this. We'll go step by step here because the structure can look a bit confusing. If you go through each major unit in this network, we have the input in red, the output in blue, and what's called the MaxOut layer in yellow. We have one here. Within this MaxOut layers, there is what's called a MaxOut unit. There are two here. These units' outputs are connected together and now what is being outputted to the next layer. In this case, there's just one neuron that brings the output together of those two max out units, but you could have many more. Within these max out unit is k neurons, k equal three in this particular case, all connected to a neuron that will take the maximum of their value. You might be wondering, where is the nonlinearity here? It's within the maximum operation. We'll see why in a few. Each of these k neurons has their own set of learnable weights, meaning they are learning different linear functions. This means, that for any given input combination, only one number is output from the max out unit corresponding to the highest activation from its Kate neurons. Max out can be used in many kinds of network type, from fully connected forward model to convolution as we see on the screen. The base methodology stays the same. Here is another view of a max out network with two layers and multiple units. As you can see, each max out unit have k equal three neurons inside of them. A very interesting point about MaxOut network is that they are learning which activation function they should be using within each of the units. How they achieve this is by it being effectively piecewise linear approximation function. This means a function made of few linear functions across its domain. Let's check out how MaxOut can create the rectifier, the absolute value, and the quadratic activation function. First, the ReLU can be easily created with a k equal to. The green line is the first activation function that has a continuous slope, while the blue is set to y equals zero. As you can see, before the x point, the zero value is always selected because it's larger than the green one. Well, after that point, the green line is preferred, thus creating an effective rectifier. Similarly, for the absolute value, two functions with opposite slope create the V-shape. Before the x point, the blue decreasing function is greater, while after the x point, the green increasing function is used. The quadratic is a bit more complicated and will require at least five nodes to make some sense. It goes from green, red function which are descending, those are the greater at this point, to turquoise, pu purple, and yellow that are ascending past the x point. So to summarize, the more k you have within a max out unit, the sharper the piecewise linear approximation will be. Like the MLP, the max out network is also a universal approximator, meaning that it can approximate any function. The proof is laid down in the paper and another one, but the crux is this part. Any continuous piecewise linear function can be expressed as a difference of two convex piecewise linear functions. Here, convex means that it doesn't cross the graph. With the structure shown previously with two max out units, we can create this very same setup with g equal h minus h of two convex piecewise linear function. We only need to set one of the weight to minus one and one to plus one and give enough k within each max out unit theoretically we can approximate any function, however complex it is with that. Now that we know roughly how MaxOut works, let's look at how it's performed with the three usual benchmark, namely MNIST, which is a simple 10-class data set of digits with 70,000 images, 
Cypher with 10 or 100 class of 60,000 image of real world things. Finally, SVHN, which is 600,000 digits image of house numbers from Google Street View. First off, max out result on MNIST look like this. Overall, very good result with dropout applied to the convolution max out network. The result is a good sanity check here for the network to be able to actually learn something. On Cypher 10 and 100, the network performed as follow. State of the art at the time, with and without data augmentation for Cypher 10. The other I've tested network on Cypher 10 with and without dropout to see how much it helped. As we can see with the green and blue line, the network works well with dropout which confirmed the initial intuition for building the max out activation units in the first place. Similarly, on Cypher 100, the network obtained state of the art by more than 3%. Finally, the max out network on SVHN, again, state of the art and performing better than the rectal Firebase network. Now, if you have been paying close attention, you might have realized that max out units have, may have an advantage over ReLU because they can pack many more parameters in the same number of layers. The other then decide to do a comparison study of max out against rectify network of multiple size. What they found was that max out seemed to have better overall performance than multiple type of rectify network. The blue line here is better than the other ones. The details though were a bit vague about how the other rectify network were constructed. In general, the comparison seems to be a bit lacking in the article, especially about the number of layers being used. A more recent large-scale study of max out performance in 18 datasets has been done, which showcased the performance of these type of units inside more modern and deep learning architecture. 11 activation functions were compared based on their accuracy and processing time. There were four total max out variants being tested and many more ready variants. From this final result table, we can see the max out variants are good. However, in overall performance, they are much slower. Yet, the most important aspect in the study was that ReLU, with three or six times more neurons than regular ReLU network, was outperforming all max out variants in general. This means that when matching for neurons per layer, ReLU had overall better results. As we can see in the spread, of performance across the 18 dataset, max out activation are doing good, but not as well as the ReLU variant with more neurons. So it seems that the ReLU is kind of good enough for most purposes, especially if the parameters are matched for comparison. Why? The main reason might have to do with simply how most modern neural networks are built, with pooling layers interspersed in between the ReLU convolutions. As per the paper, max pooling, a very popular pooling layer, applied over ReLU convolution layers resemble closely max out. The main difference here is that there's a zero included in the max pooling networks. The other did a few experiments, especially with increasing depth, where max out was working better. However, with newer architecture, this edge is not that relevant as the gradient propagation problem from 2013 can be solved with other architectural changes. Therefore, the idea of max out is still very relevant today, but in a form where the ReLU activation function is used in combination with max pooling over an architecture that allows for proper gradient flow. I hope this was useful. Don't forget to like the video if it was the case and leave a comment if you have any question. I'm here to help. Have a great week, everyone, and see you in the next video.